Okay, so the fourth mission is a little less um, wholesome than the previous one. Uh, we're going to, as hydroponics, hack into the U.S. Department of Defense to find some <laughs> redact the unredacted versions of some some files here. Specifically, one we're looking for Project Ogre. Uh, so we have the redacted version of the report, Project Ogre, and we need to find it. Uh, it's going to be stored in one of these, I guess there's eight total side hosts here. Two, only two of them are accessible right off the bat, and then the other six of them are locked behind different screens, or locked in other hosts, and we'll talk about how we're going to access them. Uh, for this job, though, there is one, or I guess two special considerations. This is a secure network, and this is the only place in the game where this entire concept appears, in that we can only have a single execution agent inside the network at any given time. If you have more than one agent inside the network, uh, the security will go off and the leave no trace objective will fail. Additionally, we cannot use the M register to communicate uh, from inside to outside the network, or that will also fail. So th what this means is if we need to get information from inside to outside of the network, an agent will have to go in, figure out whatever information it needs, and then come back out to our host here and report that information to us. Because we cannot be listed. We basically can't use the M register at all in this entire mission, unless we're just communicating to other execution agents in our host. Uh, and then we can't replicate anything at all in here. So we have to have our agents going in knowing exactly what they're going to do. So what XA is basically going to be doing is not really going in the network itself, but creating agents that will go in and do a specific task inside the network for us. So the first thing that we'll do is in the event that Project Ogre is one of these two files, we're going to check these two files first. So what I'll do is I pick up the file or my redacted version of the file and I am going to copy in Project Ogre into my T register and then I'm going to create an agent that is going to go and check a file. So I've copied the direct link 801 into my X and we've got the project in T. Uh, this guy is going to head in link across 801, grab the file, and check the title of it, and see if the file it's holding is Project Ogre. But that's not, this is Project Taro. So he's going to see, okay, that's not the file we're looking for. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to read in, or I'm going to, to communicate with you, and report back and say basically whether or not this is what we are looking for. Uh, since this one was not what we're looking for, he's going to disappear, and we're going to create another agent that's going to go in and check the next file. The next file is, I believe, also not Project Ogre, it's Project Queer. Queer? I don't know. Uh, so now that we've checked these two files, we need to now try and check the next layer of files, which is behind a lock. So we're going to create our lockbuster right here. Thankfully, the lockbuster, the locks are not as secure as you would think that they are. Uh, here, and here's what will happen. Uh... I go in with file 300. Not exactly sure why I go in with file 300. I'm sure it'll come to me in a second. Uh, and I copy the value 9 into my X register and add 0 to the end of the file. I guess we're using the file to hold on to the combination. I don't know why I didn't just make my own file. That's probably a reason. Uh, so then what we do is we multiply the value we have here by 111, which will create, in this case, 999. And that'll go, we send that right into the lock. And you'll notice the lock didn't change at all. So let's try the next number. We'll subtract 9 by 1, or 1 from 9 to give us 8. And we'll try and copy 888 into the lock. That also didn't do anything. Let's try 777 into the lock. That also didn't do anything. Let's try 666 into the lock. Aha! You'll see that the third digit of the lock actually changes. And that is because what this lock will do is whenever you get a correct digit, which in this for these locks is never zero, so it's one through nine, uh, it'll actually change the value that's saved in the lock register. So we copied each digit in there and checked to see is this digit correct. So this time it was, it was 006. 
So because that is a, a correct digit, it could be all three correct digits, it could be two digits, it could be one of them, but something has is correct. Uh, we will actually add the value in the lock to the number that we have in our file. So it's currently zero. We're going to add six to that. And then we will go and try the next number. We'll try 555. That's zero, so none of the digits are five. Now we'll try four. Aha, the first digit is four. So now we're going to end up adding 400 to six, and that gives us 406 in the file. Then we'll try the next number, which is three. Aha, that's the third digit. The tens place is three. So we'll add 30 into there. That's 436. That's the combination right there. Uh, the the bot here is not intelligent enough to stop, but since it's only going through 10 iterations anyway, that's not a big deal. Uh, it'll try all of the digits uh, until we reach zero. Then you'll see it'll put the combination from the lock or into the lock to unlock the next area. And we'll report back to our to our boss saying, OK, I'm done unlocking everything. Good job, team. Execution agent A is then going to go and repeat the process from before, although this time we're going to check four different files. This one's Project Orbis, this one's Ember, this one's Virgil, and this one's Ogre. So this is actually the file we're looking for. So we're going to send in an agent. He's going to check uh, each one one at a time until we get to the one that is the correct one. Now then, if we have found the actual correct file, let's minimize. Uh, what we'll do is we drop the file. We're going to head back and we're going to create a file that we're going to end up filling with the unredacted version. Uh, because the, the space in here is limited, we can't we don't have the space to exist in here and pick up and drop files freely. And we can't take the 200 file out of here because it's got the lock on it. So we can't take it out of the host. So what we're going to have to do is have the unredacted version in here and we'll go back and forth to pick up words between them. We can't use any M registers to communicate. I only have this one agent and he that's all we got. So what he's going to do is he's going to copy the doo -doo -doo -doo. he's going to copy the link into the beginning of the file so that he knows which link he has to go back and forth on. And then he's also uh, going to reset his X register. His X register is going to hold on to how far how many words into the file he is. So we start transcribing we re-grab our our link and put that in the t register drop our temporary our our redact our unredacted file link grab the 200 and then seek forward x how many words have we already done we've done zero so far check and see if we're at the end of the file uh since we're not we're gonna copy the word which is project ogre drop it head back pick up our thing go to the end of the file drop off our word and then increment our, our total number of words that we've done. Now we'll do it again. Grab the link, link across, grab 200, seek forward to the next word that we need. Uh, make sure it's not the last word. And then copy that one in. So now we put the paragraph symbol in there. Next is going to be this date. We're going to grab the date. We're going to put the date into our file. This is going to continue until we have found the last word of the unredacted file. Uh, let's see if I can skip ahead to when we get to that point. Test EOF, I got a T jump to found file. I don't think I can see it, so we'll have to expand you. Give me found file right here. So now file 400 is the complete unredacted version of the file. So what we'll do is we'll drop top file 200 because we are done with it. We're going to head back. We're going to grab file 400 and we're going to remove our link at the from the beginning because we do not need that. And then we're going to we're going to return home. Uh, we're going to check to see because we, we can't just blindly return home uh, because we need this guy to not be there for our leave no trace. So we go back and we check and see, oh, have we made it home? Because we're either going to be here or here or here uh, with our file. So we'll head back one and check to see, oh, is this is this home? No, I don't hear any see anything on the M register. So we're going to link back again. Are you are you talking to me? Yes, you are talking to me. So now I know I'm actually in my home because I can actually use the M register and I'll kill the other guy because he doesn't need to keep deploying agents to get further into the network. We're done with him. I already have the file and then we'll halt ourselves uh, for those cases where you need to get into the the third layer here. The lock is the exact same 
uh, process as the first lock. You, we try all of the combinations of digits, so nine through one, in you know, all the spots, and then add it into our file, uh, and then put it into the lock at the end. And then that unlocks two more possible locations that the file could be hidden in. So we'll let this run. You'll see we go, we check, we unlock, we go, we check, we unlock, and then we go and we check those last files. We found it all the way in the at the end. We go back and forth, filling it up with the information. And once we're done, we go back all the way until we see this message that XA is putting out because this is in local mode. And then there you go. Actually, yeah, it is in local mode. And there you go. That is hacking <laughs> the United States Department of Defense. Uh, be careful searching up this, any other information about this job. You might be put on a list in, in real life for how, how do I hack <laughs> the United States Department of Defense? Uh, unfortunately, the histograms on this one are a bit busted. You'll see that some people definitely took far more cycles than is required. And so almost everybody <laughs> is in this leftmost histogram. I wish I could see more on the leaderboards to see whether a thousand is actually good or not. I think it's good, but I've seen crazier things. I've seen people pull, pull some wild cycle times. So uh, I can't say for certain whether this is... Um, fat super fast or not with this one which is a little a little disappointing but there you go